Uh, welcome again to Thursdays with Troy. As always, I'm Troy, Troy Lambert, mystery author, editor, super plotterer, and your host. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to Kevin McLaughlin. He's a USA Today bestselling novelist of science fiction and fantasy, an infantry veteran and a nurse, a swordsman and a scientist, a father and a traveler. He brings all his experiences to bear on creating astounding stories for his readers. So welcome, Kevin. Hi there. Nice to be here, Troy. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> just before we get started, tell me, swordsman, tell, tell me about that. Uh, you can take your pick. I've done both both uh, Japanese and European swordsmanship. <laughs> oh. Way back a long time ago, um, I got to take Aedo classes and learn some very, very basic Japanese katana work. So down to our topic for the day, we're going to talk about uh, Kindle Vela specifically, um, because serial fiction has become a more viable way to authors for authors to get their work out there and even make some money and, you know, connect with readers. And it's a fun way for readers to binge, similar to Netflix, your content. Um, Amazon has, of course, introduced Kindle Vela recently in direct competition to some of the other serial platforms out there. And authors and readers are kind of embarking on this you know, what I'd call not so new of a format. Um, so let's talk about that for a few minutes. Um, first of all, what draws you to serial fiction in the first place? So this was a really, this is really interesting timing for me personally, because I've been doing a big study, a deep dive study into the folks, the writers of the past who had life career, lifelong careers, um, who had like 20, 30, 40 year writing careers. And so I went back to the pulp era because there's a lot of folks oh, from that yeah. time frame. And of course, that's where we see serials as being the dominant format is 100 years ago uh, in the middle of the, the biggest writing revolution, except for the one we're in the middle of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except, for, except for right now. Except for right now. Yeah. Right. So tell us a little bit about what you know about the history of serials, like where they came from, where have they been? But people have been doing it for, I think, literally that long. Uh, a lot of Dickens's work, uh, Christmas Carol and stuff like that, was serialized originally. So people read it in the little installment segments. And um, then by the time you get around to the turn of the 19th, uh, sorry, to the turn into the 1900s, you know, 20 years on either side, serials are, are huge and booming as the pulp market explodes. So these were, were cheaply produced stories a lot of them are still stuff that we, uh, we you know, we follow on today. Tarzan came yep. from that era. These were writers who produced, uh, you know, like a million words a year. Uh, a lot of them for years at a time. You know, 10, 20, 30, 40 year careers where these people produced massive amounts of work. A lot of it serialized. Right. So, so obviously to bring the serials into the modern age here we have kindabella for the, so for those who don't know what it is tell us what it is <laughs> all right so uh kdp has decided that they're going to stick their foot into the same arena that's currently filled by places like uh wattpad and radish and royal road and, and similar stuff like that over here in the u.s and um, as small as they are in the U.S., relatively speaking, they're huge in Korea and Japan and China. These markets are, are very, very big over there. And the, the smaller companies that have started doing this over in the U.S. Um, are, are doing really well with it. And some of the writers are doing really well. KDP took notice. They're going to do their version of it. Exactly. So, yeah, Vela is going to launch with uh, for iOS on the iOS Kindle app, from, uh, as far as we know. And authors are going to be able to upload serial content of six hundred to five thousand words per episode to uh, to this thing where they'll get paid a percentage. We're going to end up with about four point four cents per thousand words <laughs> the reader yeah. reads. Effectively, yeah. skip the math. <laughs> Yeah, kind of like um, very similar to KDP, like being in KDP Select and getting page reads, but more on a serial type basis. So yeah. let's dive into like exactly what an episode looks like. So I'm going to share your the plotter file that we have to kind of look at today to to help us flesh that out for writers, because writers may not understand exactly what an episode would, should and could 
look like. So let's look at that file really quick. And we just have, uh, this is probably the simplest plotter file that we've ever used on Thursdays with Troy. And we'll, we'll make this available for you guys, but it's actually really simple to duplicate. Um, so we have an outline format. So walk us through this, Kevin, walk us through this outline format and what these elements are and why they're important to an episode. Okay, so I, I deliberately wanted to keep the structure as simple as possible, and I wanted to maximize its ability to use uh, as many of Plotter's features as possible. I didn't want to fight the software. I wanted to work with it. So the, the sections on the far left there, you see first section, second section, third section, fourth section for the plot lines. Those are the pieces of the story, and this could be, depending on what kind of story you're writing and your personal taste, you could put three of those in there, you could put four, five, eight, whatever. Those are the sections of each episode. And then moving across the top, we see outline format. That's just reminder. That's a reminder header line for me. Um, and then episode four, episode three, episode two, episode one. And then underneath episode one, you'll go down to the first section and you'll fill in the block there for whatever the episode one opening scene, opening section is going to be. So we'll do that, and we'll just say opening scene, and this there is basically. Go. So, so as we go down through these different formats, the first section is the problem. So obviously, mm -hmm. if we look at the elements of a story, one of the first things we need is some kind of an an interesting character with some kind of a problem. Uh, ordinary days, while some of them are nice to have and interesting for us, are not interesting to readers. So tell us about like, how do you formulate the problem in more of an episode as opposed to a larger novel type thing? Well, in, in episode one, you're, you're introducing the character, but each individual episode needs to have leads of some kind. Now, if you look on the bottom there, I put in cliffhanger. It doesn't actually have to be a literal life or death situation, but every segment should end with something that makes the reader want to go on right now. They want to see what's going to happen next. They want to read the next segment. There has to be something urging them forward. Anybody remembers the old TV show Alias? We can learn a lot from TV for serials, for one thing. But the old TV show Alias always used to end on some like life or death cliffhanger. You don't have to go to that extreme, although that would work. You do have to add some element of mystery or wonder or something is about to happen or some kind of a lead that just really makes them want to move on. Right. And so let's talk about the scale of the problem, because often when we talk about novels, we talk about big ideas, which is the big overall idea that takes you 60,000 to 100,000 to be and beyond words to tell and the little ideas that are more of the chapter size ideas. So talk to us about the kind of the scope of an idea that you can cover in what has to be, at least the way Vela is set up right now, under 5,000 words. Okay, um, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll use a real world example. Um, you have the opening sequence of uh, the science fiction serial where you're introduced to the character and the fact that he has a problem, he's a minor, he's not making a lot of money doing it, and it's a pretty miserable experience. Moving forward, and for this one, I would actually probably use three sections, um, not four. Moving forward to the second section, he is attacked by space pirates and um, activates a bunch of his drones to defend himself. The third section is around his, um, his fighting and his escape which then I would actually tag it on. He jumps over into the next system through a jump gate and is immediately ambushed. And that's the end of the episode. So that's your cliffhanger. So here we have an illustration of all the different parts. We have a problem that the, that the character has, you know, he's being attacked, he releases drones and there's a conflict because there's a battle. There's sort of a resolution because he's able to Escapes. jump through. He's, he's able to escape, but the solution actually produces a cliffhanger. And you're absolutely right. We can learn a lot from television episodes for this or parts of movies or various different things like that. Think short stories and the scope of the problem obviously has to be something that will fit within those various different things. So 
from your viewpoint, I know this is so new, we really don't have demographics to understand exactly how we should do this, but how many episodes do you think will make a great series in Vela and why? So it depends on what you want to do with it. A lot of authors, myself included, are inclined to look at this as a way of testing new novel series or um, maybe to make income from selling the novel as a serial before it goes live as a novel. So for instance, I might do a 40 chapter, 40 episode uh, novel serial on Vala as I'm writing it and then leave it up there for three months after it's complete and then take it down and publish it as a book. That's what some people are looking at doing it. However, if you look on the other serial sites, the serials that are doing really, really well have 500 plus episodes and some of them have a thousand plus episodes. <laughs> so um, there's a real thing in this subculture of reading around having a story that just keeps going. And that's apparently extremely profitable, at least in some cases. So if you have a hit, you may not want to ever take it down. And you may want to continue writing, you know, an additional two episodes a week for as long as people keep reading the thing. Do you think that this is the type of formula that's going to work for other serial type platforms? In other words, we're focused on Vela today, of course, because this is what's new. But do you think this works for other serial platforms as well? Yes, with the caveat that most of the other uh, American serial platforms are a little bit more romance focused. Over in over in Asia, you're looking at much more adventure type fiction being super popular there. But over in the U.S., it's mostly dominated by romance, especially kind of uh, stuff on the steamy side. I, whether that's going to be true for Bella and you know all the other stuff isn't going to really work all that well or whether uh, it's gonna be wildly different on Vela because Amazon's gonna have access to this huge pool of readers. I don't know. Right, exactly. And that's, that's actually a very good point is the US has been dominated by romance. And of course, those of us that are mystery authors or sci-fi authors are hoping that that translates on Amazon to something. Otherwise I may have to write romantic mysteries for a while. I don't know. <laughs> but that type of thing. Um, so what would you recommend for a writer who's just starting out, you know, playing around with serials, playing around with Vela? What, what are some things you recommend that they do and that they look at? First off, go look at some serials. Uh, there's a lot of sites out there that do it. Uh, you can check out Wattpad and Radish. There's a bunch of them out there and, and go start checking into some of those things. So a lot of them have free content as well as paid. Look at the free. Maybe look at some of the paid too if you want to do some extra research and see what uh, what sorts of things are working. Uh, study short content because that's what this is all about. This is, a, this is TV episodes, but this is shorts. This is like a 20 minute TV episode maybe a 30 or 40 minute TV, TV episode. Right, exactly. And of course, this is all an experiment. So, you know, kind of maybe the advice that we're sharing today, what I, what I would say for our caveat for the show today is that we don't know yet exactly how this will work on Bella. However, we do know from other serial platforms, this type of formula does work. Um, so... To get back more to a little bit about you is what resources would you say have helped you get to where you are today and resources you think that would help people with specifically with like getting into short fiction and understanding that format? I actually just bought this. <laughs> but I just, I How convenient. Sure. Uh, mm. I've been reading, sorry. I've been reading a lot of books like this lately. Um, there's a few things on Kindle too. Uh, they're written by pulp era authors and they're, so they're, they're like one part memoir, one part writer advice. And a lot of the writer advice and stuff I've already heard a ton of times, but I'm going to study the people who did have longevity. So that way I can too. Right. Exactly. This is a fantastic way to, well, I think it's one of the ways to have an enduring, uh, career. Anything else that you want to 
you know, say to people about Bella and about, you know, this type of thing in general, just any last takeaway you want to give them? Uh, sure. Actually, uh, there, there isn't a downside. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I'll, I'll, you can put your, you can put the stuff up on Bella at the same time. I know there's some confusion about this. I've confirmed with the KDP staff that you can put stuff up on Bella at the same time as you put it up on other paid serial sites. So for instance, Patreon, uh, Radish, uh, you can put it up on these other sites as well as Bella. Uh, it has to be paid. <laughs> it yeah. can't be up on your website for Not free. free. Not free. Yeah. Right. Um, so you can put it up on, the, on these other sites as a serial as well while you're testing out Vela. And worst case scenario, if Vela doesn't work, you can always just take the stuff down, bottle, you know, box it up as a book and publish it that way instead. And put it somewhere so, else. Yeah. yeah, I don't see this as having a downside to it. You know, I'm going to write good stories that are going to be good in either format. So tell people where they can find you, where they can stalk you. I mean, uh, uh, find you online <laughs> and uh, where they can find your stuff. Uh, well, I'm at kevinomclaughlin.com uh, for a website. And I'm on, probably on Facebook more than any other social media. I'm an admin over at the 20 bucks to 50K group over on Facebook. We just passed 50,000 members last week. Which oh, was yes. Really cool. Amazing. Um, so you can find me there easily enough. And uh, in terms of books and stuff, I'm I'm almost in, entirely exclusive on Amazon. So you'll see uh, something like 83 books of mine up there. <laughs> yeah, <sure. Angel> luck. <laughs> Including so, a couple of nice books on writing. <laughs> so there's a little there's a little bit you can read that's by Kevin. Okay. Well, if you've watched Thursday with Troy, you always know that there's a question of the day because we're asking writers who are the very best people to answer the problems of the world. But of course, because you're a sci-fi writer, I'm going to throw something at you that's a little bit different. So you're ready for your question of the day. Okay. If you could live on any planet besides Earth, real or fictional, what planet would that be? And if you say Alderaan, I'm sending you to counseling. You're always supposed to go with the first answer that pops into your head. So I'm, uh, Pern was what came in first. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why, because that's, I guess I'm figuring I'm going to get lucky and get a dragon or something cool. But yeah, you're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> you'll get a dragon or something cool. Well, that is a good answer. It's much better than, than some of the other answers. So anyway, um, thanks, everyone for joining us for Thursdays with Troy. So thanks for being with us and we'll see you next time. Take care everyone, thanks. <laughs>